I'm Gwen Preston of Resource Maven. We're here at the Metals Investor Forum in Vancouver and in November, and I'm joined by Thomas Mumford of Scotty Resources. Thanks for thanks for joining us here at the conference today. Thanks for having me. So you um, you're leading the exploration charge at Scotty, which uh, there's a lot of different opportunities at this land package. I mean, it's yeah. a fairly it's a bit of a, a piece together land package in the first place, and then there's a bunch of different targets within it. So do you want to just set the scene, first of all, of, of what Scotty is exploring, and then we can dive into some of the details. Sure. So we have a total of 18,500 hectares in the southern end of the Golden Triangle. Our main flagship asset is located between the Bruce Jack Mine and uh, Ascot's Premier Mill. Yeah. And so we have a land package around that asset, but we also have another 10,000 hectares to the east of Stewart, which would be just west of Red Mountain. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. We'll focus mostly on that that area that's you know near uh, Ascot and 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 Pretium. Yeah. Um, and so there's a historic mine there, the yep. Scotty mine that churned out some super high grade stuff. Yep. Uh, and there's opportunity around that. And then there's a greater land package around it that's been underexplored. So let's start with the Scotty mine. You guys recently published some results from there. Yep. What's new with Scotty? I know other companies have previously come in yep. and punched holes into Scotty, and the there was a perception that it was it was what it was and there wasn't that much more. Mm -hmm. You guys have a different idea. Totally. So Scotty itself produced 95,000 ounces at 16.2 grams per ton. Um, great high grade gold and it never ran out of ore. It had right. it had it has a historic resource sitting in front of it and they didn't run out of ore. Basically the economics of the time shut down the mine. Sure. $800 gold goes down to 300 and you have a $20 million loan at 20% interest and you just can't get out. So the, the project went to the Royal Bank of Canada and then just kind of floundered between a few different vendors. Yeah. They gave it a reasonable drill program back in 2004, 2005. Okay. But they were just looking for the ounces in front of the vein. They have one vein. They found it at surface. They started mining that vein and mm -hmm. that's all they really went after. And they were just looking to keep mining. It was a good Sure. Cost-effective mine at that point. Right. Um, but they didn't do property scale exploration. So within the, the actual mine only sits on 400 hectares, a crown grant package. Mm -hmm. And so they didn't actually step outside of that one main vein and actually start surficial drilling of other main targets within the zone. And so when I first came onto the project, we just had that little claim package and that's what our exploration was focused on. We were looking at different structural models to explain why we would have another one of these, the, the main zone is called the M zone. Why would we have another one of these dilational zones? Would it be on strike? Would it be parallel? We've seen a lot of parallel vein systems through it. Right. And so we're looking at both of those options of both finding another one on strike and then one in a parallel vein system. And uh, just the other day, you put out some results that, that bode well, that, that suggest that you're on the right track there. Right. So that that is related to the claims that we staked around it. So uh. we had the great fortune in April this year that the claim blocks that surrounded the Scotty Gold Mine came available. Mm -hmm. And we were able to, uh, to acquire those uh, for a really reasonable price. And we so we went into that land, which hadn't really been explored for the last 25 years. Yeah. Um, nobody had really looked at it. The last real exploration done on the ground, like with ground workers taking superficial samples, was in early 90s. Right. And, and they had some success, but they never drilled anything. They never got that far. Yeah. Um, so we went back in, and since then, massive glacial retreat. So we were focusing on zones around the margins of the glaciers and going back in and just looking at some of these zones again. And we had some great numbers. So those are su those are surface sampling numbers. Yep. And then there's, you know, if you take another step farther back, then you've done geophysics as well in some of that new adjoining land package, which is, happens to be called Summit Lake. And those are, there's additional interest in, in targets around there. Yeah, so we didn't do the geophysics, but we acquired the geophysical survey from a okay. previous vendor. Okay. Um, and those are the ones that also haven't been drilled. Nothing's been drilled on Summit Lake. So it's super exciting that way. But the EM is an electromagnetic uh, survey. Those targets just scream where Scotty Gold is and then other known mineral occurrences around the Scotty Gold. So they're, they're very coincident with that. The mineralization at Scotty is a pyrite puritite, and puritite is a strongly magnetic mineral. Um, and unfortunately, magnetic signatures, like the electro, or just magnetic uh, surveys, don't really pick it up, but electromagnetic seems to really make it scream. And so we have another, you know, six other anomalies that are very, very similar to what we see at Scotty that we're exciting to go back in and look to. So we, we went out, we looked at them, we resampled them, we're getting the results now, and that's one of the examples of the ones we just published uh, this week. So, I mean, it's one of the things just right in this moment that stands out about Scotty is you did a lot of field work uh, almost late in the season um, and so there's a bunch of results still coming in which yeah. is great for a company that can't work in the winter yeah so those results will keep coming in through the winter and then obviously you're setting up to get out there and actually start really drill testing this opportunity for the first time yeah. next summer. Yeah, we're looking to drill test those. We did do a drill program late season. It was mm -hmm. 2,000 meters. It was in the last 
possible three weeks that you could run anything in the Golden Triangle. Yeah. And we, we did get 2,000 meters out, but those were on different targets because we didn't have drill permits yet for that yeah. larger land package. So we were drilling um, known zones and just extending them both uh, laterally and at depth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So for those who like p potential for high-grade discoveries in the Golden Triangle, which there's definitely a cadre of investors who yeah, like yeah. that right now, yeah. Scotty's sort of lining up for exactly that with, with results yet to come. Oh, we're at the top of the pile if you're looking for high-grade new exciting discoveries in the area. <laughs> Not biased at all. But. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, perfect. Thanks so much for coming in and telling the story. Thanks.